Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. All right, first and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory, as always, to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well and teach well. Peace and salutations unto all the Akim, you brothers preaching his word in truth and in sincerity across the four corners of the earth. And Shalom to the hopeful elect, you sincere believers scattered wherever you may be. All right, so as you see on the screen, the title of this one, Lord Will, is going to be Understanding Death. Understanding Death. And uh, we hit uh, a little bit on this topic at camp. Uh, you know, and the Spirit led me to just uh, throw some precepts together um, concerning this topic. You know, uh, death and what it is, uh, where we go when we perish, and how um, essentially we have nothing to worry about after death. You know, because the one of the, the tactics of the Christian church is that that fear tactic they use um, when it comes to death, how they teach uh, people go to heaven or hell, <laughs> you know, after they die, you know, but the scriptures say otherwise. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, uh, get into it. Lord, willingness be edifying and exhorting on to you. All right, I'm going to jump around. I'm actually start at a uh, in Sirach. All right, the book of Sirach. And at the end of the day, as a matter of fact, I'll start with that. And it's something we have brought out at camp. How uh we hit on the fact Satan doesn't have a, a say so when it comes to to death. It's all the Lord. All right, like how the Lord told Satan concerning Job. You know what I'm saying? Basically to uh uh to chasten him, but but take not his life. All right, because at the end of the day, Yahweh Bahashim Yahushai has the keys on or they have the authority over death. This is um first Samuel two and verse six. It says the Lord Yahweh killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. All right, so he's in control of who perishes, all right, and he's in control of uh, who gives birth. All right, he, he has control over the, uh, uh, the womb as well, man. You know, it gives you the accounts where uh, some woman... Um, basically we're, we're barren, you know, because at the end of the day, the Lord uh, essentially shut their womb, right, prevented them from having kids, you know. So it's the Lord behind uh, life at the end of the day. He's in control. But uh, let me go to Sirach, all right, or Ecclesiasticus, like 41 and 1. Going down to verse 3. All right, it says, O death, how bitter is the remembrance of thee to a man that liveth at rest in his possessions. Why? Because he has everything at his disposal. He's enjoying <laughs> all his riches. So death is going to be bitter to those it says, how bitter is the remembrance of thee to a man that liveth at rest in his possessions. All right, it's going to be bitter because he's enjoying the state that he's in with all his possessions. All right, He has to leave all that behind. It says, but unto the man that hath nothing to vex him. Oh, so like you. All right, unto the man that hath nothing to vex him. Right, so he's, he's living prosperously. It says, and that hath prosperity in all things, the spirit. And to have prosperity in all things. So it's going to be bitter to those. Right. That are enjoying all them pleasures. And those possessions. It says yea unto him that is yet able to receive meat. And then it gives you the flip. Sirach 41 and 2. O death. 
acceptable is thy sentence unto the needy. All right, because they're not in that prosperous case. All right. They're um, working with what they got. And might be in pain, some type of distress. All right, because they don't have the... Uh, you know, the, the possessions, they're not, they don't have that prosperity. So death is acceptable unto the needy. It says, and unto him whose strength faileth, right? Who may be fucked up in the body, you know? You hear stories like, uh, you know, uh, uh, legs get amputated, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, different parts of their body don't work. Whatever the case may be, it's going to be, you know, he's going to be more <laughs> acceptable when death comes because he's he's in a low estate. Right. Because when death comes, you're at rest. You're at rest from all the uh, BS you got to put up with in this flesh, in this meat suit. You know, it says, and unto him whose strength faileth, that is now in the last age. Right. Those who are up there in age, you know, they experience life. It says, and is vexed with all things. They're fed up. They're fed up at the state that they're in. All right, whatever hell they may be catching, right? It says, and to him that despaireth and has lost patience. All right, they're basically, <laughs> they're fed up with the suffering. Okay. So it's going to be acceptable unto those that are in that state rather than a person who has it all. You know, who who isn't, um, whose strength isn't failing. They're at rest in their possessions. Okay, it says, fear not the sentence of death. Remember them that have been before thee and that come after. For this is the sentence of the Lord over all flesh. All right. And we have nothing to fear. We don't have to fear the sentence of death. You don't go down to hell where you burn for eternity. No. The spirit, let me grab it real quick. I always go to this uh, precept to uh, basically cut all that hell doctrine. All right, Because again, you're at rest when you go to the spiritual realm. This is Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. Then shall the dust, right? because we're made of the earth. Right of clay and water. All right, this body. It says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. Right when you get put in the grave, it says, and the spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it. Again, like we opened up with, the Lord is uh, has authority over life. He gave you the life, and your spirit, because the spirit never dies. All right, but it transfers. So. It was once in that body, what? And then it transferred or returned back unto the Heavenly Father who gave you uh, uh, life, you know? And then after three or four generations, all right, when the Lord sees fit to bring you back upon the earth, he'll bring you back and uh, um, birth you again, all right, into a new body, all right, into a baby. Because reincarnation is biblical. Everything is recycled, man. You know, but let me go. Um, let me actually look up that word death. All right. I was going into uh, the Edamon online and I actually looked up. Well, actually, I didn't look up death. Let me see what death says. It says uh, in the old English, the app. If I'm pronouncing that correctly. It says total cessation of life. And I, let me get the. It says cessation, interruption, a ceasing, <laughs> uh, abdication, delaying, ceasing, tearing. All right. So you're ceasing from this body, you know, from this flesh that you're in. And you're you're basically resting. You're at rest. You're at sleep. Right, you're you're asleep. Okay. It says, what does it say? Uh 
state of being dead, cause of death, and plural ghosts and the spirits. Uh, act, process, condition. Uh, and a symbol of mortality. I said death's head. And that's basically it. All right. But essentially, you're at rest, right? You're sleeping. Because this is, um, and actually, let me grab Psalms here. As a matter of fact, before I go there, let me jump to Ecclesiastes 8 and 8. All right. Ecclesiastes 8 and 8. Again, hidden on the fact that Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Uh, is over life, all right? And uh, again, it's a, it's a sentence for all flesh, but then, like the scriptures tell us, there's going to be some that, that taste not of the death and they're going to be um, translated when the Lord, Yahweh Shai, returns. And we believe we're in that generation now. We don't have, according to prophecy, man, the way, <laughs> the way everything is unfolding before us, we're definitely in them latter days and we believe through faith we're in that generation where the Lord is going to return. All right. It's months away. Now, we don't know the specific time, but we know we're very, very, very close to the end. Ecclesiastes 8 and 8, it says, There is no man that have power over the spirit to retain the spirit. All right. You have no say so whether or not uh, uh, you continue living or not. It's up to the Lord. It says, Neither hath he power in the day of death. So whenever the Lord has it in his story to where he punches your ticket, that's going to be the day. You know, and why do we die? Yeah, the wages of sin, all right? Because we go off, because we're in this flesh, we're made subject to vanity. So, you know, that's the sentence <laughs> over everyone, you know. However, hey, the Lord, Yahweh Shai, conquered conquered death he conquered sin right, he was that perfect sacrifice for the nation of israel right, and he was raised up all right and um you know he he gave us that blessing of eternal life all right because in the kingdom of heaven uh, uh oh death where's thy sting there's going to be no more death why because we're going to be perfected with the law statutes and commandments written within our inward parts so if we're perfected and the laws statutes and commandments are within us all right they're etched within our minds within them bodies there's uh uh therefore death is going to be um non-existent for the nation of israel all right that says and there is a uh, it's a lot here going continuing on ecclesiastes 8 and 8 it says, and there is no discharge in that war, neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. <clears throat> exactly. And I'll read this in the NLT, Ecclesiastes 8 and 8. None of us could hold back our spirit from departing, right, from going up to the Heavenly Father. It says, none of us have the power to prevent the day of our death. There is no escaping that obligation, that dark battle. And in the face of death, Wickedness will certainly not rescue the wicked, right? Because the, the, even the wisdom of wickedness is no wisdom, loosely paraphrasing. Okay, and it says, uh, damn, uh, uh, right, and that wickedness isn't going to save you, all right? Wickedness, neither shall the wickedness, it says, neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it, but it says what? Scriptures also say righteousness Deliver from death. Okay. And uh, how are we kind of righteous now? Through our faith and works. Well, mainly though, our faith in Yahweh Shai. But with that faith, you got to have works as well to back it. All right. But that's um, uh, uh, how we're kind of righteous, man, in the days that we're in now. It's through that faith. All right, and through the love, the keeping of the commandments. All right, because um, 
our righteousness is counted as filthy as rags when it comes to the keeping of the law. And we're not going to be saved by the law. We're, we're, we're going to be saved through the grace and mercy of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, uh, we're of that number, the, the elect. Okay. So from there, I actually wanted to, let me grab this account here, Mark. 5 and 39, and I might start up a little bit. And Lord willing, it's all coming together. You know, I'm bouncing. Um, this is, I'll start at 36. Mark 5 and 36, it says, And soon as Yahweh Shai heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. Actually, I'm going to start at 35. Mark 5 and 35. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain, which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? All right, it says, as soon as Yahweh Shai heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. All right, because he gave, uh, and Yahweh gave uh, authority unto his son. All right, the power that Yahweh Shai was doing, all right, his miracles that he was performing was given to him by his father. It's mighty. That's why he told him, be not afraid, only believe. Because <laughs> he knew that he, he had the power to, uh, um, to bring back to life okay and and of healing he made people whole you know he gave a uh, um sight to the blind uh, he made the uh the lame walk so on and so forth but this mac um mark back in mark 5 and 37 says and he suffered no man to follow him save peter and james and john the brother of james and he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye thus ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. So that's Jehovah Shai right there saying, She's not dead. Alright. She's just sleeping. I'm going to grab that word dead here in the blue letter. It says, To die of the natural death of man, uh, to perish by means of something. You see, and that's where they're going off here. It says to be subject to eternal misery in hell. There's no such thing. Uh, hell is a condition played upon the earth. All right, or hell also being the grave. You know? It's just a grave. Um, dead. That's basically it there. Let me see what it says in the uh, first sleepeth. It says uh, to fall asleep, drop off to sleep, to sleep, to sleep normally, euphemistically to be dead. It says... That's what I want to hear in the Strong's definition. To lie down to rest. All right, from Hadu. To lie down to rest. All right, because at the end of the day, you are resting. That's why, they, <laughs> you know, they have the uh, the saying, rest in peace. They're legitimately resting in peace because they're up there in the spiritual realm. They're, they're, they're in perfect order up there in the spiritual realm, man. You know, and that's where... Like it says in the book of Job, you know, you have the, um, every spirit up there, even the wicked spirits that were committing all the wickedness here on the earth, they go back up to the heavenly father. All right. And they're in perfect order there. And then again, every third or fourth generation, they'll come back and play out their judgment uh, according to the deeds that they were doing, doing in their previous lives. You know, we get we get judged. In the lives that were given. That's why I said judgment is under the sun. What's under the sun? The earth. This is where we play out our judgment. 
But going back in uh, the book of Mark 5 and 40, after Yahweh Shai had said, the damsel is not dead but sleepeth, verse 40, it says, and then they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entereth in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha uh, Kumai, or Kumi, probably butchering, it says, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straight away, straightway, the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of 12 years. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Man, you know, so like I said, man, he uh, uh, he killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth to the grave and uh, raiseth up, loosely paraphrasing. All right, and I'll read this in the NLT. Again, 1 Samuel 2 and 6, the Lord gives both death and life. He brings some down to the grave, but raises others up. Right, and he also does that spiritually, man. You know, we're spiritually revived with this truth, this knowledge. And real quick, I want to grab that word sleep as well in the Edomon. All right, it says to be or fall asleep, lie or remain dormant or inactive, right? You're inactive <laughs> uh, in this carnal body, all right? You know, but your spirit is living. You're always living. That spirit uh, cannot be destroyed, okay? But, you know, you're, you're remaining dormant. You're an inactive in the physical form, in the body, you know, on this earth, okay? It says, uh, and I'll go down, is when I want it. It says the meaning, actually, I'll start up here. It says slept, sleeping. It says the usual pyrude is S-W-E-P. It says the meaning to rest as in the grave is from Old English in reference to parts of the body be numb through stoppage of circulation. And that's essentially it right there, man. You're resting. Okay, so like, uh, let me grab this here, Psalm 13 and 3. That's why the scripture says, well, uh, fear not those that can kill. Let me just grab it on. I want to butcher it. This is Luke 12 and 4. It says, And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, have no more that they could do. Yeah, because after that, what? <laughs> you just go back to the Heavenly Father. You know, you transition. After that, what, what could they do? Now you just have a, a lying corpse. Okay. But with the Heavenly Father... You know, he could <laughs> he could bring you back and uh, torment you when you're when you're back in a new body. You know, that's why you see people birth as a uh, uh, midgets, birth with deformities, birth with diseases, whatever the case may be. That's judgment given from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. This is Psalm 13 and three. It says, consider and hear me, O Lord, my power, lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Okay. Now, that's a prayer, uh, a Psalm of David. It says, lest mine enemy say I have prevailed against him and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Okay, so he's asking the Lord, like, turn and answer me. Like it says in the NLT, oh, Lord, my power, restore the sparkle to my eyes or I will die. All right, the sleep of death. All right, so you're just, you're, at, you're sleeping, you're at rest when you perish.
Um, and I just wanted to end off here in 2 Maccabees 6, kind of uh, changing gears a little bit because we're coming into some times to where we might be faced with death. You know, our heads might be gone on the chopping blocks um, in the times to come. You know, the, the, the devil, uh, the deceiver, the slanderer, the accuser of our brother and Esau, Edom, um, might roll, might roll down, you know, and we might be, uh, uh, have to be martyrs, martyrs, witnesses for Yahweh Shai's sake, all right, for the sake of prophecy, all right, and actually I'm going to grab this here, 2nd Ezra 16, all right, but we're not to fear those things, man. Like it says, fear not the sense of the sentence of death. And know that uh like in First Thessalonians four, it tells you those that, that perish in the Lord, you know, are, are some of the ones or one of the ones that are gonna be raised up first. Those that perish in Yahweh Shai, they're gonna be raised up first. All right, in them clouds, in the chariot. But this is second Ezra sixteen and seventy. It says, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. So, you know, you're going to have some that uh, have to die for truth's sake, man. But like the scriptures say, precious in the sight of the Lord are the death of his saints. All right, that's an honorable death that uh, is going to be held in in a high regard to the Lord. You know, but then you're going to also have those that are uh, um, are going to be translated. You know, and they're not going to see the death. But we have to gird up our minds to where hey, love not our lives unto the death, and um, you know, go. <laughs> go out strong right it says fight for the truth or, or strive for the truth unto death and the Lord shall fight for thee Lucy paraphrasing you know he's going to grant you eternal life because you stood stiffly for the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai to the end you didn't lose faith All right? you believed uh, in the Lord all the way to the end All right? you didn't bow down a knee all right, you didn't give in and, and worship uh, Esau, Edom, and his system. You said to hell uh, uh, with this place, right? With this current evil world, with this w wicked rule, you were longing for the kingdom. And you're going to get rewarded a righteous reward. Let me jump to 2nd Ezra 16 and... 74 it says here oh ye my beloved saith the lord behold the days of trouble are at hand but i will deliver you from the same be ye not afraid neither doubt for the most high is your guide and the god of them who keep my commandments and precepts saith the lord yahweh bashim shai let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift up themselves all right so let me go to uh Second Maccabees, all right, we'll end there. All right, because again, man, you know, the guillotines will be back. All right, and, um, you know, he's going to be destroying those that fear the Lord. You know, it's going to be uh, uh, heads chopped off. You know, those that uh, refuse the, the micro sea hip. Those that are not down with the agenda of the wicked elites. Hey, man, we're going to go out courageous. Lord willing, you know, he, he gives us uh, that bold warrior spirit in those days to where we just take it. Not the chip, but but take the death. All right, because you fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And you don't fear what they could do to your body. You know. Let me go with uh, Salakia. Um, I believe it's 2nd Maccabees 6. 
And actually, I wanted to grab it in the GNT Salakia. I'm going to start at. Uh, bear with me. I was reading this earlier. All right, and the heading of it, this is back in the time of Maccabees, but the heading of this chapter, 2 Maccabees 6, it says the Jews are persecuted because of their faith. And I'm going to go down to uh, verse 18. Account of Eleazar says the heading of this one. Uh, of this excerpt, it says Eleazar dies for his faith. Second Maccabees 6 and 18 in the GNT. It says there was an elderly. And I'm going to just, uh, Lord willing, I'll just read it through. All right. It's an exhorting, uh, um, exhorting excerpt right here, man. All right, within this uh, within this chapter, and then, uh, man, it's inspired. All right, because you may, man, you you're having them days to where, you know, you may be uh, uh, witnessing y'all uh, uh, followers, believers, and y'all bashim y'all shy, tasting of death, and hell, you may have uh, some that that may be on that guillotine, and and the Lord could could uh, block it, you know. Or some miraculous act, stop that up, blade right as it's about to hit your neck, and you get uh, them spiritual powers. You never know all right, what the Lord will do at the times, man. But those that uh, receive the death, know, uh, hey, man, you got your spot on the chariot. You know, you you dying for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, so this is uh, 2 Maccabees 6 and 18. It says, There was an elderly and highly respected teacher of the law by the name of Eleazar, whose mouth was being forced open to make him eat pork. It says, But he preferred an honorable death rather than a life of disgrace. So he spit out the meat and went willingly to the place of torture, showing how people should have courage to refuse unclean food, even if it cost them their lives. Those in charge of the sacrifice had been friends of Eleazar for a long time. And because of this friendship, they told him privately to bring meat that was lawful for him to eat. He need only pretend to eat the pork, they said. And in this way, he would not be put to death. But Eleazar made a decision worthy of his gray hair and advanced age. All his life, he had lived in perfect obedience to the Most High's holy laws. So he replied, kill me here now. Such deception is not worthy of a man of my years. Many young people would think that I had denied my faith after I was 90 years old. If I pretended to eat this meat just to live a little while longer, it would bring shame and disgrace on me and lead many young people astray. Wow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so he was thinking of the repercussions, man, like the, the, the effect it could have upon the flock. You know? Even just pretending to eat uh, swine's flesh, you know, and what that would do uh, to the faith of the little ones. It says, for the present, I might be able to escape what you could do to me, but whether I live or die, I cannot escape all the almighty or I cannot escape almighty power. Right. <laughs> right. So you may, uh, he was thinking I may escape this judgment. All right. You putting me to death right now, but I'm, I can't escape the Lord. So he feared the Lord rather than that sentence, man. You know, it says, if I die bravely now, it will show that I deserve my long life. It will also set a good example of the way young people should be willing and glad to die for our sacred and respected laws. All right. So he kept his integrity, man. It says, as soon as he said these things, he went off to be tortured and the very people who had treated him kindly a few minutes before, now turned against him because they thought he had spoken like a madman. When they had beaten him almost to the point of death, he groaned and said, The Lord possesses all holy knowledge. He knows I could have escaped these terrible sufferings and death, yet he also knows that I gladly suffer these things because I fear him. So Eleazar died, but his courageous death was remembered as a glorious example, not only by young people, but by the entire nation as well. Man, <laughs> you know, so we got to have, 
you know, and pray. All right. Speaking first and foremost to myself that he gives us the spirit in the times to come. You know, if we're if we're kind of worthy all right, to, to make it unto those days. You know, that's why we continue to hope. And um, hope in his mercy. OK. And if, it, if it's our lot, you know, to go on that chopping block or whatever death they may give us, let us take it cheerfully. You know, and, um, you know, if, if that's our lot. All right. But with that, hey, man, Lord willing, this was edifying and exhorting as well unto you. Again, I want to give all praise, honor and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Wadash. Double honors again unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well and teach well. Peace and salutations again unto you, hopeful elect. With that, a Shabbat Shalom, Wa Kwam Yasharala Shalom.